union here in the hot state. Other states have the same turmoil with their public employee unions. Uh, Dave Jones mentioned Wisconsin, Scott Walker. Uh, Mississippi, we have a different situation because we don't have uh, collective bargaining. Our public employees don't have a contract to renegotiate, which actually makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, in some ways for us to deal with it as a state. The reason that matters is because the public employee retirement system has $20 billion in assets and people's retirement is not in jeopardy, so don't worry. But they have $30 billion in obligations. So long term, it does have a major impact. So do you see that as a problem? And what do you intend to do to address it? Let me start with David Dennis. First off, state employment should not be considered as something that is a right or a privilege per se. The state should not be considered an employment agency. So to that extent, I don't think, and I don't think you'll get any disagreement with the three men up here, the state should not be in a position of making certain people have the ability to work. If they want to work, go get a job. If you happen to be in the state, great. Now, with respect to employee unions, we're a, we're a total open shop in our construction company. We have had union contracts where we might have a job site agreement on one particular job, but never any blanket deal. And that was simply because if you worked there or you didn't. So we would not be union, but we would pay a, a wage that candidly was less than we were already paying. So as you look at unions, it has been the death knell of business in this country. If you take unions plus NAFTA, that's why many of the industries, including what my father was in, which was Vanity Fair, Women's Lingerie, and Cut and Sew, but it left because of unions, it left because of NAFTA. So unions in any arena, be it private sector or in a governmental arena, I think ought to be outlawed. Let me back up on that. Outlawed in the public sector, not in the private sector. They should be their prerogative. In the in union, in a public arena, where you have taxpayers funding it should not be permissible. Mm -hmm. Brian. Was that a union question or about? That's a PERS question. PERS question, I thought so. Uh, I, I agree, uh, we have very limited union in the state of Mississippi, but the real question that he asked is well, how are we going to take care of retirement? Now, we made an agreement, not made it years ago, we made an agreement with people that we said if you go to work and pay into your retirement, you know, when you retire, you're going to get it back. And I'm a man of my word. I'm going to stand by that. Now, how do we do it in the future? We make sure that new employees coming in understand they're going to be living until they're 100. So we start cutting back on those benefits. We slowly reduce the amount of benefits that they might receive. Because, you know, in the old days, it was low state wages and great unemployment. Well, the wages have gotten pretty darn good. Uh, I, I can tell you they look they look pretty competitive out there. So we're going to have to say abide by the agreements that we have. You can't take people's retirement away from them. Now, we did increase the part last year of the contribution of every state employee. I'm paying more. Every state employee is paying a little bit more because when it started back in the late 50s and early 60s, the state paid one-third and the employee paid two-thirds. Now it's upside down. We're going to have to help write that. We're going to have to do it with people who are coming into the system into the future and keep our word for retirees that are looking uh, to us in their golden years. That's a holiday. Well, I, I, I would say to agree with Phil on some of this stuff. But public, we have a contract with public employees. They went to work. They paid in. We promised them something. we got to, we got to live up to that. You employees coming in, maybe that needs to be restructured. But that's where you change it. You don't go back and change people the deal that you had before. It's just, again, it's an integrity issue with, with me, and I'm sure with, with the other two that's up here. Uh, I understand, and, and I'm not an expert in this in this field, obviously, nor I'm an expert anywhere. But uh, the state, we, we increased their max, but then the state held up on theirs. Isn't that correct? That's right. And so the state didn't have enough money, so the employees are paying more. Their paychecks are less, but the state's not matching it because of the shortfall of money. I know a lot of policemen and firemen are upset about that. And, uh, but, you know, it's, uh, I want to make Mississippi and keep Mississippi competitive. And, and what I don't like is being able to call down to Jackson and have to call three times before you can talk to a live human being, number one. And have to talk to three of them before you can find out the answer to your question. And, uh, you know, nothing against public employees. We, we work for county supervisors. I've got about 30% less people working for me today than started working for me four years ago. And we get better service. 
and it's easier to do business in Pearl River County today because we got less people. 